Hey guys, so today's video is actually going to be a multi-part video. So it's going to be covering the topic of fitting a Makuni flat slide carburetor to the DR650. The DR650 comes with a CV carb or a constant velocity carb. It's got a vacuum diaphragm that when you open the throttle, more air goes through and it causes a vacuum on top of a rubber diaphragm to pull the slide up to allow more fuel to flow. Uh, really great as far as like a smooth ride, you know, it, it's pretty good all around carb, but not real great for performance. Now I'm not seeking out ultimate performance, but I have an issue with my DR that at highway speeds, if I hold it like 70, 75 miles an hour for a long enough distance, like two or three miles running down the highway, it starts cutting out and backfiring and popping and whatever until I let off the throttle. So that tells me it's a fuel starvation issue. Now I believe this issue was caused by something I did. Unfortunately, there's not a real good way to fix it. Let me show you. I've got the IMS uh, five point whatever gallon fuel tank on here. Uh, it's bigger than the original tank, which is great. The only problem is the fuel valve is originally up here. And with this oversized tank, it drops up to here. Again, not that big of an issue, except for the fact that the stock carburetor, this fuel inlet here, is originally pointing up. So a common thing that people do when they go to a larger tank is they'll pull the carb off the bike and clamp this steel fuel elbow in a vise or something and twist the carb so that this elbow is positioned down. And I had it clamped up and got it almost into the correct position and tested it out and decided I wanted to go a little more. The second time I clamped it up, I didn't get on the other part of this bend. And when I twisted, it started to kink this pipe. So it doesn't leak. Um, and I've got several thousand miles of um, slow, slower speed gravel rides and it works fine. But when I'm on real long stretches of highway speeds, the thing runs out of fuel. And I think it's because of the restriction in this elbow from it being kinked. It just can't deliver enough fuel fast enough for the fuel consumption at highway speeds. So looking on eBay, um, the original, a used original carb, uh, they run for anywhere from $90. I've seen them listed for $250 for an OEM CV carb. And I didn't want to try to extract this elbow and replace it with some kind of straight fitting if I didn't have a backup carb to go on here in case I goofed something up. So. That's when I got to looking into the flat slide upgrades. Well, I happened to find this McCooney flat slide. It's originally off of a Harley Davidson, or it's a, a common Harley Davidson upgrade as well. Um, and so this one actually came off of a Harley. It's a used unit, but I got it for cheaper than I can get these OEM carbs. So I figured, why not? Okay, so here's the two carbs side by side. Uh, we got the OEM um, CV carb and the aftermarket uh, flat slide carb. So physically, size-wise, they're pretty similar. Um, there's, you know, some obvious differences. Throttle plate is closer to the front on this one. And on the flat slide, it's up here at the top. So we're gonna have to reposition some throttle cables. Um, they'll go into a bracket here. Instead of pointing down, they'll point this way. Um, I'm going to have to do some jetting to this. I have no idea what size jets are in this. Someone could have modified it over the stock Harley jetting. Um, so I need to figure out what's in here and do some research and find out what's recommended. Um, there's also an accelerator pump jet. So you can see this rod that comes down and it pushes in here. There's a little diaphragm where it'll squirt a little extra fuel. Um, when you first twist the throttle, this didn't have anything like that. Um, but probably the biggest thing, oh, one other thing, um, so your choke plunger screws in here on the original carb, and on the flashlight carb, it uses the same exact style of choke mechanism, so should be able to use the stop choke lever up on the bar if I want to retain that. Probably the biggest difference between the two in getting them fitted is the rubber intake that bolts to the cylinder head is made to accept this size. This is a little smaller diameter, uh, three millimeters smaller, in fact. And so when you buy a kit like this from ProCycle or one of the other uh, companies that puts together kits for this Makuni flat slide to fit on the DR650, uh, it comes with an aluminum adapter that is press fit onto here and here because both sides need to be modified. So this is also 
about three millimeters larger diameter than this. So I've already made one adapter that will press fit on there. I just turn this on the lathe. And so that one's good to go. Um, but I will press fit this on here with some Loctite and so it'll be a nice good fit. I still need to machine this one and that's going to be what this other video is about. So uh, if you want to go check that one out, uh, I will have another link somewhere, maybe back up in the card on actually just fitting this once I get it adapted, um, how to fit it on the bike. Uh, I believe I'm going to have to shorten the inner cable length just so that it works properly. Um, but more videos will come. Uh, also post down in the description uh, links to these other videos in the series. And if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below. Okay, guys. So um, I need to take this apart and for a couple reasons. One, it's a used carburetor. I have no idea what the condition of the internals is. Um, I don't know if it's sat with fuel in it. It doesn't really smell like old nasty gas, um, but it is dirty. Um, the accelerator pump over here is sticking, and I think there's just a bit of corrosion buildup here. Um, it looks a little dirty, and I need to get it apart, get it clean. I'm going to run it through my ultrasonic cleaner. Um, but I also need to verify what size jets are in this. So I know not everybody's got an ultrasonic cleaner. Um, I've been pretty happy with this one. I, I got it on Amazon. It was around $250 at the time. I don't know what they're selling for now, just with supply chain issues, uh, but I'll post a link to this one down below. Um, this one is big enough to do a full set of motor motorcycle carbs, like four carbs all together. Um, so if you're just doing single carbs, you wouldn't need a unit this big. Um, but I went with that just because I wasn't sure what I'd need it for. So I'm going to start tearing this down. Um, I've had a lot of carbs apart in my life. Uh, I don't know that I've ever had this particular carb apart. So it's not really going to be a how to get this apart. I'll just do like a speedy montage of getting this apart. Getting it. Uh, the football screws on this are all kind of jacked up. I was hoping I'd get enough bite on them, but they're somewhat seized in here a little bit and they're kind of jacked up. So um, I think I'm going to have to use an impact driver to try to break these loose. I'm going to do it in the vise over there, but I'm not going to do it. So um, the screws were too badly damaged. Um, I was able to lock onto three of these with a needle nose vice grips and get them broken loose. Um, this one down here next to the accelerator pump is just not enough room to get the jaws of the vice grips on there. Um, so I think I'm going to have to drill the head off of that screw and obviously replace all these screws. guys so it has been too long um, I've had this carb apart um, the last part of the video I was getting it clean uh, that same evening I got it out of the ultrasonic got all the parts rinsed and dried off uh, and then it's been sitting on my workbench for a month and a half um, part of that was I was waiting on parts so um, I got a full uh, rebuild kit this is part number KHS001. It's a rebuild kit for the TM46 carburetor. Um, I got this from eBay and I ordered it from an eBay store, Moto Help. And they actually threw in this package. Uh, it's got two O rings and a screw and a little note that says, Here are some extra parts not in the kit that we like to replace. So, very cool of them to include those. Um, I'm not sure exactly which O rings these are, uh, it doesn't say. Uh, the screw, I believe, is the screw that holds down the float valve. Um, the O-rings, I'm not sure. Maybe they're just extra O-rings for the float valve, or they may potentially be the O-rings for this fuel elbow. Some of the other things I got, uh, because I had to drill the head off of one of the ball, uh, float ball screws, I just went to my local hardware store and bought some socket head um, or Allen head stainless steel screws in the proper length. These are a four millimeter by 0 0.70 pitch, uh, 12 millimeters long. I got four of those. And then jetting. So I determined the, the kind of baseline for jetting 
for this carburetor going on a DR650 is a uh, 150 main jet, a 22 and a half pilot jet, and then the accelerator pump nozzle. Um, I think this was a number 45. I think the Harley nozzle that's in it, I think is a 70. So uh, it's quite a size difference. Uh, looking at the, the hole in the tip of the original nozzle versus the one I got, there's a, just to the naked eye, there's a difference. Um, the, the original one is much bigger. So those, those big V-twins uh, need a little extra juice compared to what this little single thumper will need. So um, that's it. That's all I've got as far as new parts. Um, I'm gonna get this kit opened and see what all is in it. And just to keep things from rolling around, grab another rag here. So got some new vent hoses, local gasket, top cover gasket, sticker. Everybody loves stickers. Um, oh, look at that. It comes with four float bowl screws. So I wouldn't have needed to purchase these, but going from a Phillips to one of these socket head, these are, aren't going to strip out. But I've got them in case I need them. A uh, new float valve assembly, a new fuel screw, and a spring, and o-ring, and washer. Good stuff. Let's see, accelerator pump boot, or accelerator pump rod boot. And then some various O-rings. There's like a little nylon spacer. You get these little parts up here. Yeah, a little uh, E-clip. Not sure what that goes on. Oh, I bet that goes on the top of the needle. Nylon spacer for the needle. Um, this little guy, I think, is maybe for the accelerator pump nozzle. Here's another O-ring and another O-ring. So I'm not sure what these two O-rings or this is for. So I'll need to look into that. I, I may be able to find a parts breakdown of this of this kit number. So let me figure out what those are and I'll come back. Okay, so I think I've got to figure it out. Um, there was one other little tiny O-ring, uh, this little tiny guy here, and it goes on the accelerator pump nozzle. So it goes around the shaft of the accelerator pump nozzle. Um, it was actually tangled in with my vent line. So kind of shook it out here and this little tiny booger fell out. Um, so E-clip and the nylon spacer is for the needle. Um, this little funky doodad here is also for the accelerator pump. Um, it goes, in this hole right here by the float valve where the accelerator pump goes up through. Um, this bigger O-ring is for this float bowl drain or float bowl cap. Um, this medium sized O-ring is for the choke valve cap. Um, I'm gonna reuse my stock choke cable for the DR650. So I'll just swap that over or put this O-ring on my original choke cable. Um, I think this is maybe an extra O-ring for the fuel valve um, or for the float seat, float needle seat. Um, there's already one on there on the float assembly or float valve assembly. Um, but I think that's just an extra. Um, these extra parts that Moto helped sent, uh, this screw is the, to hold the float valve down. And these two, I believe, are for this fuel, nope, not that one, for this fuel elbow. Uh, in the exploded diagram of this carburetor, it shows these two O-rings, but there's no part number for them. So I think it's really cool that they sent these. But I think that's it. I'm going to start getting this back together. Um, I'm not really going to talk through it. I'm just going to go with it. One last quick note, um, this little bracket that holds the fuel inlet. Um, it's a security torx. It is a T20 and it's going to have the hole in the end. So carb is back together. Um, a couple of the things that I ran into um, reassembling the carb, uh, that little like black mushroom rubber piece uh, that I said was for the accelerator pump nozzle, it actually goes between this outer diameter. It's, it's down in between here. So you actually have to remove these four security screws to pull this entire nozzle off. Um, but it's best to have the slide out when you do that. So when you have a slide out to clean it, uh, that would be the time to remove this so that you can replace that little rubber seal between this assembly and this assembly. Um, accelerator pump nozzle, uh, the hole should be facing the needle. Um, there is a flathead uh, slot for like a flathead screwdriver. 
when you still have the bowl off, you can adjust it. Uh, but it's just a friction fit with an O-ring, so you can just grab it with a pair of pliers. And, and you're supposed to, once you get fuel in it and you're, you're actuating the accelerator pump, you're supposed to watch where it's actually spraying fuel and adjust it so it's hitting the needle. Uh, for the DR650, I've read, and how I have mine adjusted is this gap between the accelerator pump rod and the actual white plastic piece that rotates around. Um, you should start off with about a 80 to 100 thousandths of an inch gap, or roughly a 2 millimeter gap. And then um, this little adjustment screw on the top that points straight down, um, that is the stop for when it stops spraying. And you should adjust that stop so it stops spraying about between two thirds and three quarter throttle. Um, what else did I have that I ran into? Um, this cap on the bottom is there so you can quickly change main jets. Um, mine was on there really tight. And when I got it off, um, I did not take it off prior to running it through the ultrasonic. And when I got that off, there was a lot of like tiny little rust particles in there. So I cleaned that out real well um, before I put it back together. Uh, the gasket that came with this kit for this top cover, um, there's some little locator pins right next to each of these screws and the gasket that came with it. It just didn't fit over those locator pins and to line up the screw holes properly. Uh, I took a little drill bit and just enlarged those locator pin holes in the gasket uh, just so the gasket would fit around the screw holes better. It's still not the greatest, but it's basically just to keep dusting stuff out. Um, I did, uh, when removing the slide, there's a bolt that goes into this, this spring-loaded shaft that actuates the slide. Uh, that bolt has Loctite on it. Uh, when you reassemble it, you want to put some Loctite back on it. You really don't want that bolt backing off uh, mid-ride. It would probably destroy a lot of stuff in here. Um, I think that's basically it. Um, my next step is going to be machining the aluminum spacers uh, for both the intake and the airbox side, uh, just so it will fit in the stock intake manifold or intake rubber and stock airbox boot. Um, so I've got, I've actually got the intakes side uh, machined up. These will be a press fit, um, and they'll be held on with some Loctite adhesive. Um, this enlarges this side just so it fits snugly in the intake boot, and I will be turning down an adapter for the airbox side soon, um, and that will be another video that I'll post up here. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. Um, if you want to check out the other parts of this series, um, machining these adapters, actually fitting it on the bike, and then we'll actually get into tuning it, uh, doing a fuel screw, if I need to swap any jets or anything, uh, maybe do a little accelerator pump adjustment. But if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them down below, and until next time, we'll see you later.